Looking at the exponential distribution, recall that the exponential distribution was related to the Poisson distribution. The difference is, is that the Poisson distribution was focused on counts, whereas the exponential distribution will be focused on the arrival times between the counts, or the times between the, between the uh, events or counts. So the Poisson distribution was a discrete probability distribution, whereas the exponential distribution is a continuous one, because all the numbers in between all the whole numbers actually have meaning. Recall that the exponential distribution was also a continuous, discrete, a, a continuous probability distribution function that is bounded on the left by zero. So in other words, the, we'll start with zero and then begin to tail out to infinity. So our, our possible values will always be positive. Now, on the left here, we have a, a sample set of data that has the number of customers that, that have come in, or the individual customers that came in, and their associated arrival time in minutes. What we've done is we've calculated the delta between the times that they arrived. So we know that the first person arrived at 1.45 minutes. Now, while the second person arrived at 2.59 minutes total, they arrived 1.14 minutes later. So we just subtract these two together. And the third one arrived at 1.09 minutes later, and the, other one, the next one arrived at 4.02 minutes. So it's telling us the arrival times, and we want to actually model the distribution here. When we take an average of this, we at the bottom, we get our average of 3.57. But we need to calculate one other parameter. We need to calculate what's called the rate, because the exponential distribution requires the rate. And the rate is nothing more than 1 over the mean. So we'll just take 1 over that 3.57, and we'll end up with 0.28. Now, the function that we're going to use is called the exponential distribution expon.dist, which takes three parameters. The first parameter is x, which is the value that we're looking for. So this will correspond to our arrival time. The second parameter is lambda, and that is actually going to be the rate. So the rate is always referred to as lambda uh, in the distributions. And that is equivalent to 1 over the mean. And the third parameter is the cumulative parameter, which tells it whether we're going to have a cumulative probability or an exact probability. So let's take a look at how we use this. In the first case here, we have an arrival time of 1.2. We want to know what the probability of having an arrival time of 1.2 or less. And the way we do that is we will use the exponential distribution. We will choose our x. Then we will choose the rate, which is the 0.28. And we'll follow that up with true, because this is going to be a cumulative distribution. And it tells us that the probability of getting 1.2 or less is 0.28 or 28.6%. Now what we're going to do is we're going to anchor this, the C108, so that we don't have to keep typing this in. And we're going to copy this down through the remaining ones. And as you can see, the arrival time of 2.5 or less is, gives about a 50% chance, or 0.50. And an arrival time of 3.3, .3, the delta again, the delta of arrival times, will be less, will be 60%. Because as we keep increasing the arrival time, we're accumulating all of those probabilities. So the probability of getting an arrival time uh, within 4.1 minutes would be 68%, or 0 0.683. And the, and the probability of getting an arrival time of 5.2 or less is 0.76, or 76%. 76 now, the probability of getting an exact rate is similar to the function that we just did. However, we're going to just modify it slightly. We're going to choose our x as the arrival time. We're going to choose our lambda again as the rate. So that remains the same. And we're going to anchor that. And this time, we're going to make it false because we don't want the cumulative uh, distribution. We want the exact. So when we do that, we see that the arrival time of 1.4 is approximately 18%. There's an 18% chance that we're going to have an arrival time of around 1.4. We can copy this straight down, and we can see that as you get higher and higher, the probability of having a, a larger arrival time begins to wane and slowly trend to zero. Now, this is one of the properties here. If you recall from the previous uh, module where we talked about the uh, exponential distribution and we showed the graph, you'll see that that as the, the delta of arrival times uh, increases, so we have on the top here 1.2, 2.5, 3.3, 4.1, 5.2, .2, the cumulative distribution increases and it will always tend towards 1 because again of the cumulative nature of the probabilities. But as it gets higher and higher, it will 
gets, uh, the, the difference between that and one will get smaller and smaller, but it really won't touch one because it is, goes on for infinity. In the same way with the probability of the exact rate, we'll get smaller and smaller probabilities as the arrival time delta goes up and up and up, but it'll never hit zero, but it will be very close to zero. Now to calculate the probability of arrival time greater than 1.5, we're going to actually take one minus, and again, we're going to now use the distribution again. We're going to have that 1.5, our lambda of the 0.28, and we'll do true for the cumulative nature. This will give us the entire probability less than 1.5 and, and including, but we're going to take 1 minus that to give us everything greater than 1.5. And you can see that that represents 65% of the curve. So there's a 65% chance that the arrival time will be greater than 1.5 minutes. We're going to anchor this uh, for the rate, and then we're going to copy this down, and we can see that 2.3 will turn out to be uh, things greater than, the arrival times greater than 2.3 minutes will be about 52%, and an arrival time greater than 3.3 will be about 39%, and an arrival time greater than 4.9 will be greater than 25%.